Welcome to my quick chocolate tempering guide, an online class teaching how to make these gorgeous chocolate shots that are so popular on my social media. In this class I'm not going to give you all the knowledge in depth, it's going to be quick and easy. I just want to make sure that everyone who watches this class has some confidence to give that a go and make beautiful gifts or potentially make a business out of it. I have very simple ingredients here and of course you can start making chocolate bars like this. And here's some tools that are required to get you started. I have silicon spatula, offset spatula and a scraper, plastic container, which I prefer because it doesn't hold the temperature as opposed to glass or ceramic, and I have infrared contactless thermometer. I prefer this thermometer because it gives you quite precise temperature when you press on the button. These thermometers are not very expensive. You can buy them online or at specialized chocolate shops and they're very useful when you start working with chocolate. I also have silicon mat and baking paper. Let's talk about the ingredients I have on the table. I have white chocolate and red chocolate from Inspiration Range by Valrona. I need red chocolate to color my white chocolate because we are making pink shards. When it comes to chocolate and this particular tutorial, I would like to mention that we will be working with real chocolate. It's not candy melts, it's a real kavacha chocolate, which means it does not have any vegetable fats, it only has pure cocoa butter. You will have information in written notes that will tell you the difference between real chocolate and not real chocolate, which is compound chocolate. I also have Microya cocoa butter. I will be using Microya to temper my chocolate. I have 240 grams of chocolate in total and 1%, which is 2.5 grams of Microya. You only need 1% to temper your chocolate. Microya can be found online, especially as shops, and these box will be enough for you to last long unless you're a professional chocolatier. Here's some other ingredients I have that I will be using to decorate my chocolate shards. I got some flower petals that are edible, corn flour, there's freeze-dry fruit, strawberries, raspberries, I have some blueberries, I'm using freshness because they stay crisp for quite a long time even in my humid conditions. I have some nuts, which are almonds and pistachios, and I have puffed quinoa. You can use any other ingredients that are dry and don't have any moisture. That's why freeze-dry fruit are perfect. If it's just dried, sometimes they have moisture and they can mix with the chocolate and chocolate and water, they are not friends. So please avoid any water in your chocolate. Plus, if it's not freeze-dry, you won't get this beautiful vibrant color and crisp. I have a couple of bags with powders. These powders can be used in place of the Inspiration Range Valrona for the color. You can mix it with your white chocolate. The only difference will be that you're not going to have consistent pink or yellow, whatever color you're trying to achieve, just because it's not as fine as the powders that they added into the Valrona range. Technically, Valrona chocolate is white chocolate with those powders, but it's been manufactured in a factory. That's why it's uh, so much more fine and consistent. To work with real Kavachi chocolate, you need to learn how to temper it. As I mentioned, my easy tempering method requires Micrio cocoa butter. Micrio is a stable cocoa butter, which already has better crystals, and they will help you to temper your chocolate. My first step is to combine white Kavachi chocolate and raspberry inspiration by Valrona. I have about 5% just because I want quite a vibrant pink color. You don't need a lot to make it pink. And melt it in the microwave to the temperature of 45 degrees. I will melt my chocolate using microwave method, microwaving it for 20 seconds at a time and mixing with a silicon spatula every time I take it out of microwave until my chocolate melted. I will be checking the temperature with my thermometer to ensure it reached 45 degrees. You can see my chocolate started melting after two 20 seconds installments. 
I will give it another 20 seconds because I see that some little pieces are still not fully melted and then I will need to cool it down at a room temperature to 34 degrees Celsius. The best is to work in air-conditioned room but ideal chocolate room temperature is 18 degrees. My chocolate is fully melted. The temperature is 44 degrees, so I will leave it to cool down to 34 degrees before adding cocoa butter. Thirty-four and a half. that's perfect. I can add cocoa butter. Now you have to be quite good at mixing because we need to mix it very well to remove any little lumps that you have. The cocoa butter should be melted. It's very fine so it doesn't take long. I suggest not to mix it too fast so you don't have air bubbles. I love this beautiful pink color that I achieved. Usually it's recommended to test your chocolate whether it's tempered correctly. You can use a spatula and put some dash of chocolate on it, leave it aside for a minute or two and if you're working at a cool room temperature of 18 degrees Celsius it will crystallize within a couple of minutes. I don't do this because if you follow the steps and temperatures, then you don't need to test it. You can be assured that your chocolate is tempered. Now I've got a couple of things here. It's baking paper and silicon mud. Both can be used for making chocolate shards. The rest is simple. We will be pouring chocolate onto baking paper and depending how thick your shards need to be, you can use two pieces of baking paper or one piece. I think for me one is enough. So I'm going to be pouring it. The working temperature of white chocolate is 28 to 29 degrees. I'm not going to wait for this temperature because I know my chocolate is tempered and I can just spread it on my baking paper and start decorating. Scrape all of your chocolate because it's quite expensive and quite precious. I prefer putting silicon mud under my baking paper because I'm going to be tapping it to remove any air bubble excess. You can also use wooden board or chopping board to make your life a little bit easier. Now I'm going to spread it using spatula. You can also use your scraper to spread it around. I like it to be even and consistent because it looks stunning. You can use these shards to decorate your cakes as well. If you have any excess of chocolate on your spatula, just remove it with another silicon spatula. It's my forever friend. I love silicon spatulas. And anything that crystallized on top of your silicon spatula can be then removed and used again. I'm going to tap my chocolate a few times just to remove those stubborn bubbles of air because I want it to be nice and consistent. I'll be using some raspberries, maybe crushing them and adding them. You've got to work quite fast because the chocolate will start crystallizing. Some pistachios, some of the almonds and of course strawberries why not I'll do lots of lots of different things because I just love it and some of the corn flour why not and of course quinoa puffs you can make several different colors and 
make sure that you have gorgeous variety. Now I'm gonna leave my chocolate aside to stabilize. I usually leave it for 20 minutes at 18 degrees room temperature. If your room is much warmer, I suggest to wait until chocolate is dry to touch and then put it in the fridge for another 5-10 minutes and then take it out and it's going to be ready for you to break into little gorgeous shots. My chocolate is ready, it's nice and crisp. Now I'm breaking them into smaller shots that I will be able to position in the box. One last thing I wanted to mention. I recommend to store your chocolate with freeze-dried fruit and berries in airtight containers and if you want to put them in a box like that I usually use acetate bags to preserve the chocolate from any air that might destroy your precious fruit. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and got some more confidence working with chocolate. With this knowledge you will be able to start creating chocolate spheres, chocolate figurines or anything chocolate you want. And of course, if you decided that you fell in love with the chocolate, I have another tutorial called Chocolate Part 1 that teaches how to make chocolate truffles and chocolate bars.